collectively, these narratives help make sense of a day that we as a country and as a people are still trying to process. In her oral history of the day, Eve Butler G., who was on 9-11 a clerk in the U.S. House of Representatives, remarked on how fascinated Americans are by their own memories of that day. I've noticed we don't listen to each other's stories. We need to tell our story. Someone will start saying, well, I was such and such, and the other person will interrupt and talk over and say, well, I was so and so. The shock, in many ways, is still embedded in our memories that this thing happened on our shores, in the places where we felt the safest. Her observation rang true to me throughout this project, as every mention of 9-11 to friends or acquaintances immediately prompted people to pour out their own stories, often with heart-wrenching intimacy. This book is an attempt to listen, to hear others' stories, to know what it was like to experience the day firsthand, to wrestle with the confusion and the terror. The only plane in the sky is not meant to be a precise account of how and why September 11th occurred. Groups like the 9-11 Commission devoted years of work and millions of dollars to provide those answers. Instead, this book intends to capture how Americans lived that day, how the attacks in New York City, at the Pentagon, and in the skies over Somerset County, Pennsylvania, rippled across lives from coast to coast, from the Twin Towers to an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida, and how government and military officials on Capitol Hill, at the White House, in mountain bunkers, at air traffic control centers, and in the cockpit of fighter planes responded in an unprecedented moment to unimaginable horrors. To construct this book, I worked for two years with Jenny Pachuki, an oral historian who has dedicated her career to stories of September 11th, and who located for me about 5,000 relevant oral histories collected and archived around the country. We closely read or listened to about 2,000 of these stories to identify the voices and memories featured here. As part of that, I've drawn upon interviews and exhaustive work from the National September 11 Memorial and Museum and the 9-11 Tribute Museum in New York City, the Flight 93 National Memorial near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the September 11th Education Trust, the U.S. House of Representatives Historian's Office, C-SPAN, the Arlington County, Virginia Public Library, the Fire Department of the City of New York, the Historical Office of the Office of the Secretary of Defense, the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Coast Guard, the 9-11 Commission, the Museum of Chinese in America in New York City, Columbia University, Stony Brook University, and other repositories, as well as a host of snippets and transcripts culled from news articles, magazine profiles, pamphlets, videos, documentaries, collections ranging from the trial exhibits of 9-11 conspirator Zacharias Musawi to a compilation published by America Online of its users' thoughts, posts, and memories of 9-11, as well as countless other books, including three that deserve specific mention for their usefulness. Mitchell Fink and Lois Mathias's terrific 2002 collection of oral histories entitled Never Forget, as well as two books focused on the 9-11 New York Maritime Boat Lift, Mike McGee's All Available Boats, and Jessica Dulong's Dust to Deliverance. To supplement these existing archival primary sources, I've collected several hundred interviews, personal reflections, and stories myself, about 75 of which are featured here. I'm grateful to all who shared their stories. Among these hundreds of memories collected as early as September 2001 and as recently as the spring of 2019, the chronologies and stories don't always line up neatly. Perspectives differ and images blur with time. Traumatic memories especially are fallible. I've done my best to line things up according to the facts and timelines available. All interviews have been condensed and edited for clarity. Throughout the book, all titles, occupations, locations, and ranks are accurate to that moment. Additionally, for ease of reading and historical accuracy, I've edited some quotations to make verb tenses consistent and made minor factual corrections.